This episode of Bright Hearth is brought to you by Joe Garrisey with Backwards Planning Financial, Trevor and Autumn Perkins with the Kings Ridge Elderberry Farm, and by our supporters at Patreon.com. Every married couple knows what it means to fight about something incredibly dumb. I'm talking losing your whole Saturday to a fight over who was supposed to reorder the coffee beans last week dumb. People fight over dumb stuff. But did you know that two countries almost ended up in a shooting war over a stray dog? Yep. The War of the Stray Dog, also known as the Incident of Petrik, was a brief conflict between Greece and Bulgaria in 1925. While it may sound funny now, it had serious implications for international relations at the time. The incident began when a Greek soldier stationed on the border between Greece and Bulgaria was chasing after a stray dog that had crossed into Bulgarian territory. In the pursuit of the dog, the Greek soldier accidentally crossed the border himself. This seemingly minor incident quickly escalated tensions between the two neighboring countries. Bulgarian border guards captured the Greek soldier, and the Greek army demanded his immediate release. However, the Bulgarian authorities refused to comply, arguing that the soldier had violated their territory. The situation quickly became an international incident as both countries mobilized their military forces and prepared for a potential shooting war. Diplomatic negotiations were attempted to defuse the situation, but they were largely unsuccessful. As tensions continued to rise, both sides began to prepare for escalation and war. The Greek army mobilized troops and artillery, while Bulgaria requested military assistance from its ally, Serbia. The international community grew concerned about the escalating crisis, and various diplomatic efforts were made to prevent an all-out conflagration. Finally, after several weeks, yes, weeks of heightened tensions, the League of Nations sent a commission to the disputed area to investigate the incident and propose and broker a resolution. Ultimately, the League of Nations commission determined that the dog incident was indeed a result of a Greek soldier's accidental border violation. As a result, Greece accepted responsibility and issued an apology to Bulgaria. The Greek soldier was released and the tensions gradually subsided. Sometimes people fight about stupid things. Sometimes guns are drawn bullets are fired, or words are exchanged over things nobody had any business fighting over in the first place. How can we stupid argument-proof our marriages, households, friendships, and church relationships? That's the topic of this week's episode of Bright Hearth. Know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. James 1, 19-20 Welcome back to Bright Hearth, everybody. Hello, welcome, Brian. Welcome back. How are you? Doing good. How are you doing, babe? Good. We're talking about conflict resolution and peacemaking, and we've heard a lot of good things from people. Yes. I've got a lot of messages this week that this is a helpful series, apparently. Yes, so. <laughs> yes, it is. So here we are again tonight, but what are we talking about tonight, Brian? Well, we are talking in this episode about an issue that just about everyone has experienced and one that has definitely come up quite a bit in counseling, pastoral ministry, never in our experience, though. We've never fought over anything done before. You made the comment about the coffee beans. Makes me wonder if you got annoyed that there weren't enough coffee beans. I sat there and I tried (laughs) to think of an example of a dumb thing to argue about for like five minutes. And I was like, I can't think of anything. I'm just going to use coffee beans as an example. So yes, that was very specific, but had very little to do with it. Any actual fight that we had... And basically, this is the, and the issue we're talking about today it is honestly just the reality that a huge percentage, sometimes even in some households or marriages or families or churches, it seems like the almost majority of typical conflicts within a household are often about stupid things that nobody had any business fighting about in the first place. What was the example that you thought of earlier? This is from very early on. Probably 10, almost 10 years ago. Yeah, we had a couple that we had been counseling for a while. I have no idea where these people are anymore. Yeah, so it's, they were from another church. church. It was a unique situation, yeah. the reason we ended up counseling them. But Ira was six weeks old, and Ari was probably new to, if not even two yet. And they called us, and we had already had some interesting interactions with them, but I think the husband called you and was like, we have to come over tonight. Right now. And you were like, well, we have a newborn. Does it, is it really like really tonight or can we talk about it tomorrow? And he said, no, it has to be tonight. They came over. 
I'm not going to tell the whole story. No, you don't have to. There was a lot of drama with our kids surrounding the whole thing <laughs> where you're like, I was already like, hey, guess what? I'm six weeks postpartum and now you're in my house at you're like, like can you make your, the, the kids be quiet? Yeah, they asked us. The baby like, was can crying. You, can you make the kids be quiet? Because <laughs> I like, the newborn was what? crying while I was trying to feed him and I was trying to feed the toddler at the same time, yeah. who, by the way, was stuck in a bumpo seat yeah. and was walking around probably disobediently, shaking it around, crying. <laughs> and it was just like, you know, a typical postpartum scene where this couple shows up, yeah. needs counseling right now. So you're right thinking now. World War Three is well, broken out. And our, our condo was 700 square yeah, feet. Yeah, it was not there was an ideal circumstance. But we thought, okay, this is, you know, high stakes. We're going to counsel them. Mm -hmm. Come to find out, he hadn't taken the trash out. Yeah. And he lied to her about it. She said, did you take the trash out? And he said, yes. <laughs> and she and said, it no, caused you this whole thing, <laughs> this whole argument. And oh. you literally stood there. I, I was like, I watched you, you said, you literally said, so you didn't look at porn or like cheat on her or something like this whole thing has gotten this blown out of proportion. And it's not even like, why did you, why did you lie about that? I mean, it's bad to lie about anything, but it, you know what I mean? I think that's what you said. You're like, why did you lie about like, the trash? Were you scared of her? I think he was really scared oh of his gosh. wife. Anyway. So that was a really stupid funny, stupid thing really to fight funny. about. Oh, that was that was just one of the greatest. That was one of the highest quality. I just counseling you moments guys of my life. Should have seen me. It was worth my it. Head, it was worth just it. Just quietly shaking my head in the corner. The whole scene was worth it. Just for when it is a funny memory now. When you're feeling a little down, and you just think, think about that. It was. Think of it. There is so many so many good experiences with with uh you know you get in some funny funny situations in ministry oh, never yeah. the same never the same week twice. So we're gonna be talking a little bit about that. <laughs> not not taking the trash out and getting in big fights about it. But just a lot of the things that people tend to fight about, we're talking about peacemaking this season, conflict resolution. Well, a lot of things people tend to fight about, it's not actually about the thing itself. It's yeah. about people being impatient, prideful. It's about people being sarcastic, scorning scoffers. It's about people being wanting quick to, to be speak. right. I think a lot of these things yes. are wanting to be right, not like getting the last word. Stubbornness. Have to get the last word. And... So we end up fighting or, or, you know, we end up fighting about stupid things, but the thing is not the thing. It's the sin in my heart that is latching on to something stupid in order to make it a battleground for conflict and argument. And so in this episode, we're going to talk about specifically four common reasons that this happens. And, and the aim is not just to talk about them, but also to talk about how not to do that. Talk about how to stop fighting about stupid things how to recognize the sin in your own heart, uh, get repenting quickly, get back into fellowship quickly, and stop, again, stop losing your Saturdays and your evenings to stupid arguments that don't need to exist. R real quick, before we jump into those four reasons, a few housekeeping notes and announcements here. So first, uh, there's a link in the description of this episode and all the episodes for this season it has to do with the next season of Bright Hearth that we're going to be doing, which is actually going to be season four. It'll be a shorter season where we're going to take up your top questions. So we get questions all the time on Patreon, on Twitter, Instagram, everywhere we get questions related to the topics of productive Christian household, marriage, parenting, family. So we wanted to devote a whole season to like the top, I don't know, 10 or so questions that you guys send in. Go to that link and leave us your question. You can do it anonymously. I don't know who sent it unless you like write in the message who you are. Um, and sorry for the last two weeks that that link wasn't working. Someone told me like, hey, by the way, this doesn't work at all. So I made a new <laughs> link and I, I tested it this time and it actually does work. And then one other thing, uh, one of our sponsors for this episode is the Kingsridge Elderberries. And they're a great Christian family. They, they grow their own American elderberries. You guys heard about them in one of our ads they're sponsoring the show for a, a while here. We really appreciate their support. And they actually just added a discount code so that if you use the code BRIGHTHEARTH, no spaces, all lowercase, BRIGHTHEARTH, you get 10% off your order with them. So definitely check that out. And uh, that's in the description. Why didn't I think well. to give Ira any elderberry syrup? <laughs> One of our kids is sick. And the Kings Ridge actually <laughs> sent us some, some of their yeah, awesome elderberry go, syrup. I'll go so do that after we're going to go give them some after this episode <laughs> anyway. And it'll probably help them out. So anyway, guys, let's jump in with the first reason that many of us find ourselves getting into fights about stupid things, and let's talk about how not to fall in this ditch. And, and it, this sounds so obvious, I know, but again, remember some of the things we've talked about recently, uh, especially in the first episode of this season. Knowledge isn't maturity. 
knowing this and being like, oh, Brian, Lexi, I know this, uh, that's obvious. Well, do you do it? Do you actually obey it? Because a huge number of our stupid fights as pe people can be traced to this one. And that's just simply pridefully thinking too highly of yourself. Just pridefully thinking too highly of yourself. You know, the scriptures command us not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought, but with sober judgment and to consider others as greater than ourselves. And, and I just think of so many times in these little argue, in these, you know, these little arguments, like you said, Lexi, that a lot of the time what's happening is that we are stubbornly demanding that everybody conform around us to our own worship. It's like thinking that we're little gods or, you know, even acting like we think that we're little gods. And it makes it so easy to become easily annoyed by small inconveniences, by minor affronts, or even sometimes by pure misunderstandings. A passage that comes to mind here is from Ephesians chapter 4, uh, where Paul says, I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called, with all humility and gentleness. And I, and I like how Paul here is going to link humility and gentleness and walking in a manner worthy with your called. Um, he says, with all humility and gentleness with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit, in the bond of peace. So a lot of the time when we find ourselves fighting and bickering all the time or in little, just everybody's being stubborn, everybody's uh, you know, being prickly and easy to offend, um, nobody's trying to serve the other person, everybody's trying to be served, well, what are we doing? We're probably just flagrantly disobeying what Paul writes there in Ephesians 4. I was trying to think of an example of somebody who's just being proud in a silly argument specifically. Mm -hmm. And just one example would be if you are trying to assert that you are right about something. I think that is something that yes. is so stupid when people do that. It's like, okay, cool. You could be right or you could be wrong. Especially like little details. Just drop it. Yeah. Of anecdotes. Yeah. You know the thing where you're like at a party or you're at a church function and you're hanging out with a group of people and there's a husband and wife there and... And he's telling a story or she's telling a story. And she's like, you know, last Thursday I was, and she's like, oh, it was on Wednesday. <laughs> and he's like, no, it was on Thursday. We have children <laughs> like this. This is every morning. Actually, this doesn't happen every morning at the breakfast table no. anymore because every morning at the breakfast table, we now listen to the Bible. And that quietly really eat helps. our breakfast. Yes. <laughs> but yes, this, it's like detail bickering or like who knows the correct lyric of a song. Uh, I intentionally <laughs> sing songs wrong just to avoid this issue altogether. Because you can assume that I'm singing the wrong lyric, and then there's no need to argue. You guys would probably be astonished at how few lyrics to songs Brian actually knows. I know very little lyrics. <laughs> I actually because you're more you're more of a musician, so you're thinking of it more in terms of the melody you know, tune. I don't know what is. I it? just didn't listen to a lot of like pop music and stuff. And I like words because I like to read and write. So I know. So it matters to me if you have the right words. I know really obscure post hardcore lyrics. From yeah, that's true. Yeah, bands like Law Dispute, uh, but or you have memorized me without you. Yeah, me without you in a sweater poorly knit. One of the greatest songs of all time. Who was I think that? That guy. This is a total aside. Who was that spoken word guy that we used to listen to? Listener. Listener. Yeah, that's mm -hmm, really good too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Wooden Anyways. Heart. So that's a great example of this because it's like when you get obstinately stuck in this. I am going to prove myself correct over this little whatever point. It can be something absolutely stupid. What's actually operating there in your heart is it's just yeah, pride. Yeah. It's just an unwillingness to bend. It's the opposite of humility, gentleness, patience. It's the opposite of walking in a manner worthy. And you really do call. have to think again, like in that moment, tell yourself, who cares? Do I want to lose the whole day to this? Yes. Who do cares? I want to lose the relationship to this? Do I mm -hmm. want to look like an a-hole in front of everyone because now everyone knows I'm right? Yeah, exactly. Like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and, and the kid example is really important here because ultimately what's happening in that situation is that you're being very childish. It's, it's a, children have no filter, and they're not yes, yet childish. sanctified. That's a good way to put it. So they're like, no, 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 you don't understand. I'm right. And a lot of times they'll do this about things where it's obvious that they're not right. They're, like, totally wrong factually. Are you talking about adults or children? Children. Oh, okay. And so when, when adults do it, it's like, it's, it's almost embarrassing. And so a lot of the time what is helpful here to fight this is to recognize that I'm a servant of my brother. That's fun fundamentally what I am. I'm a servant of my brother. I'm a servant of my spouse, servant of my friends, servant of my children. At the bottom, what it means to be a servant is to love 
my neighbor as myself. That's that's the fulfillment of the law. And so thinking like, okay, do I like it when people pedantically correct me and then decide that this is the hill that they're going to die on? <laughs> and, you know, the, the, the relationship is worth blowing up over whether that anecdote from 1997 happened on a Wednesday or a Thursday. And it sounds so silly, guys, but so many times that in, in, in the literally in like situations like that, counseling situations, this is kind of what's at the heart of a lot of the what starts the landslide or starts the fall down the, the, the cliff of a huge argument is just the flesh taking a small little thing and instead of somebody being eager to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace, they are eager, eager to think of themselves as the center of the universe and of everybody else as worshipers who are failing to do them justice. Our friends Trevor and Autumn Perkins own and operate the Kings Ridge Elderberry Farm in East Central Indiana. They believe, as Psalm 24, 1 says, the earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof. From the antioxidant and vitamin-rich berries to the knowledge of plants and soils and the ridge where their plants are cultivated. They grow American elderberries because their berries have higher quantity and more stable antioxidants than their European counterparts. The Kings Ridge is a quality-oriented family farm focused on building Christendom. Whether you need tasty elderberry syrup or want the highest quality, fresh frozen juice or berries for making syrups, jams, pies, or wine, don't buy dried European elderberries and support the global economic agenda. Visit tkrfarm.com and purchase your elderberry needs from the Kings Ridge Elderberries. That's tkrfarm.com or click the link in the description of this episode. Uh, another, another way I think this shows up is obsessively thinking about your rights or what you deserve and then making sure that you keep a close eye on whether or not everyone else is giving you those rights to your satisfaction. Can you give an example? Yeah, so here's a good example. It's often it's often legitimate things. You know, maybe in a season of life, we have a lot of young kids, tons of housework all the time, and also a lot of, I work on a lot of stuff. I'm working a lot. And uh, it's easy in a season like that for sometimes maybe a wife to think, like, I'm this is a hard season of life. Like I really deserve extra help around the house from my husband. He, in, so why is he getting home and he's not jumping in right away with the list of chores or he's not helping out the way I want. And maybe it's a simple thing where he's not, he does, it's your domain. He doesn't know everything that needs to be done properly. Maybe you haven't asked him or given him like a, cons, a clear list of things that would be really helpful or communicated that clearly. But it's easy to start thinking, well, he's supposed to lay his life down for me. Like there's the verse right there in <laughs> Ephesians five. He's supposed to Christ literally died on a cross and he can't he can't vacuum. Like, why isn't he vacuuming? I have these <laughs> rights. Like I'm his bride. Uh like isn't he supposed to love me that way? A husband can do the same thing. He's like, she's supposed to be respecting me right now. And maybe there's something that he's not communicating clearly, or he's just, you know, getting hyper focused on your rights and what what the even the lawful demands that you have from the other person in mm -hmm. the relationship. And the second you start hyper focusing on your rights and what everybody else owes to you, even if they're legitimate things, guess what happens? You, you get, get craggy. craggy. It's true. Cranky, crabby, craggy. Yes. Um, yeah, you're just miserable to be around and you're miserable yourself. Yeah. You get snippy. You get snippy. And short and snarky. Yes. You get and then and grabby. then here's the worst part about this one is that you usually sometimes to some capacity get what you wanted, but then yeah. you end up feeling really guilty about it. Yes. Because you've manipulated your way into it. You get what you want and everyone's miserable. Yep. So yes. still it's better off. I, I mean, I think almost with every single one of these when you sent me the outline earlier, all I could think of was that verse. I think it's in First Corinthians. Why not rather be wronged? Yes. Why not rather be wronged? In the long run. Yeah. You're gonna be a happier person. And Paul's literally talking about getting sued in yes. that passage, or or refusing to sue somebody who has like swindled you out of money. So it's not so a small thing. So in that circumstance, what I would tell myself is, why not rather have a little bit of a mess your kitchen tonight? Yeah. Why not rather go to bed a little extra tired mm -hmm. and have maintained the peace yeah. in the household? Like yeah. literally, yeah. guys, you have to get on a practical level with these things. Yeah. What's gonna What's actually gonna be worth? And also, this is not what we're saying isn't inconsistent with being 
calm and clear about way, things that would be helpful from a spouse or from your husband or your wife or like, hey, it's it's been a tough season. Tonight, could you help with this? Could you bathe the kids? Could you do this? Could you do that? And a lot of the time, if we are kind and smiling and you know, we're doing our, we're basically focusing on what we owe to the other person, which is kindness, humility, gentleness, mm-hmm. patience. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Then even when we approach them with reasonable requests, a lot of the time we'll find greater success. And they'll be like, oh, of course I'll help with that. Mm-hmm. Because look at this smiling, feminine, kind mm-hmm. wife who's working so hard. Or look at this, you know, my husband who's being very reasonable and um, he's he's asking for something totally reasonable. He's doing so in a gentle and patient <laughs> way. But what we tend to do is we get annoyed in our heart and we're like, we deserve this. This is my right. They're not giving me what I deserve. It's They're failing me. And then a lot of times what we do is we start picking at that scab and we're like, no, they're not just failing me. They're sinning. It's Ephesians 5. He's supposed to, like, we start yeah. building up their sin. I think a lot of the time, just to help women identify this in their head, is when you're saying things like, they get to, I have to. Yes. They oh. get to do this. I have to do this. They get to leave they and go to work. They get to do this. I have yeah. to do this. <laughs> so, man, and, and like these are the time, those are the moments when in the average day, the common fights like this break out. It's like a guy leaving for work. Yeah. And she's so frustrated that he's going to leave and she feels like he's going to some utopia. And he knows that like work is hard and cursed. His work is cursed. Her work is cursed. It's all hard. But she's maybe thinking like, mm-hmm. oh, great. I'm now going to have this whole day ahead of me. It's going to be really tough. Yeah. And so she can be like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to let it, I'm going to let him know how annoyed I am by being surly and not giving him a kiss as he walks out the door. I'm just going to give him a cold shoulder. And if he asks what's wrong, she's going to say, nothing. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Well, that's arguing about something stupid. You're just adding yeah. more pain to your already apparently difficult life. So the solution for me when this is happening, and it's not just with Brian. I mean, this really can happen with friends or like fam- other family yeah. members or even with the kids. Yeah. It's just, it is literally to stop and like give thanks for five things about that person right there. Yep. <laughs> right then and there. Because it helps put into perspective like, okay, maybe this one thing isn't working out, but what are all of the other like good things I'm overlooking? Yes. And pride makes you overlook all of the good things. And things to be thankful for and ways that people are serving you or doing their duties well to you. And it, make, it magnifies all of the failings until some of the things you think yeah. are failings are not even real. You, you can do this with extended family. You can be like, why aren't the grandparents thinking about, you know, how great it would be to come over and watch our kids twice a week? Like, why aren't they thinking about, you know, they're asking us to go on this vacation. Don't they know how hard that's going to be for us? They're asking us to come over for Thanksgiving and stay till 9 p.m. And don't they like there's so many ways that we can start to get hyper focused. Yeah. And instead of just simply being clear and calm and patient and maybe even being firm and saying, like, yeah. there's some boundaries here or this would be helpful. A lot of the time what we do sinfully is we get mad at other people for not reading our mind. We think more highly of ourselves than we ought. We start picking at scabs. We get bitter. And then pretty soon we're all obsessed with our rights and not laying down our life for anybody else. We're, we're saying, why is nobody laying their life down for me? That is not the pathway to joy, Bright, Mm-mm. Bright Arthur's. Mm-mm. It is not. That is a pathway to something other than joy. And it rhymes with... Misery. I was going to say, Actually, that's it funny. Is misery. I was going to say it rhymes with... Misery? Scissory. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, number two. And I think this is, a, this is kind of a specific one, but I've just seen this, this one pop up quite a few times at the center of these fights that when you start digging through the fight to find the foundation, like, okay, but I know you're all mad at each other. You've been mad at each other for six hours. Tell me where did it start? And a lot of the time, this is where it starts. And it's assuming the motive of your spouse in the least charitable possible light. Or not even the motive, but just assuming that your spouse is thinking, acting, or intending to act in the least possible charitable way that you could interpret their actions. And a lot of times we do this in our mental headspace without ever talking to the person. And by the time we are talking to the person, we're already mad or annoyed Mm -hmm. or even giving them the silent treatment or something Mm -hmm. over something they didn't even do. Yeah. (laughs) Something they didn't even mean. Yeah, don't do that. I think this is a good place to calmly if you can if not just keep your mouth shut but i do think the goal is to be able to get to to get to the place where you can calmly talk about these things Mm -hmm. but this is a really good place to say like hey 
I don't actually think this is what was going on. Yes. But this is how I'm feeling about it. So if help me not feel that way or Mm -hmm. (laughs) not apologize, but I don't, I don't really know. This is kind of a telling in yourself. Yeah. Asking for clarification. Yeah. You've been really good about this, actually. This has been one of the things that I, I learned to tell other people to do, like in dealing with this kind of dynamic, even in counseling is from some of the ways that you've in the past said like, okay, I'm tempted to think this way. I don't think this is actually true, but I know that I'm tired and my my emotions are telling me like, Brian just doesn't want to be around you. He wants to just go work and get away or like it's so like there's so much noise and or he's yeah you know and it's not not true and you know it's not true Mm -hmm. but the fact that you didn't assume it was or allow yourself to meditate on that yeah and then start acting as if it was yeah but instead came and said can you pray for me yeah can you help me to think rightly about this yeah typically if you are seeing yourself fall into a ditch like one or two times maybe you know there were two weeks Two mornings this week that you were tempted to give your husband the cold shoulder Mm -hmm. for X, Y, Z. Then on that third morning, or maybe that second afternoon, you should call your husband calmly and Mm -hmm. explain, hey, I'm sorry that happened. Here's what's going on. Ta-da. Yeah, it seemed like you were on your phone way too much. And I felt like you were just trying to escape and not hang out and not want to be with me or the kids. And so I started thinking this. I don't think this is true, but can you help me yeah. think through this? And a lot of times there's something legitimate. They're like, oh, yeah, you know what? I was really distracted. I kept getting texts from work. A lot of the time there and- is something small and legitimate yep, yep. that your mental thought life is blowing out of proportion. Or we had a situation recently where I was being unkind to you. I don't remember. Because this. of like these six other things that were outside of your circumstances uh-huh. that I knew there was no way in heck that I was going to explain to these people. Mm -hmm. This is, this is very too specific. I can tell you're trying not to give any details. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But well, I don't even know where I'm going with this. That's okay, babe. What were you saying? (laughs) (laughs) No, it's true. I was trying to be helpful with something very specific you were saying, and now I'm forgetting. Yeah, you were. uh, And and so you talked to me about it. Yeah, but there was something more specific than that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Look, guys, <laughs> we're back to recording it post Alfred bedtime. So, you it's know, fine. What? It's, it's fine. Good. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I think one one way that I know that men can tend to do this, because we talked a lot about ladies. But one th- one thing I know where men can tend to do this is if you think about the, the way that men and women both desire to receive love and affection. Um, I know. I know what it was. I'm okay, sorry. Go ahead. No, that's fine. You you understood some of the extenuating circumstances, mm-hmm. but there were also other things you were you had not sinned against me. There were mm-hmm. other things outside of your control and outside of my control mm-hmm. that happened that were emphasizing how I was feeling towards you. Yeah. Essentially. So I had to tell you all of those other things, which I didn't want to tell you all of those other things, but I had to. And so I think sometimes it can be helpful. This is why being uh, able to communicate calmly is important, is because this. you could have just taken if I had just said, you know, corrected you in one thing. <laughs> Without explaining all these other things to you, you could have been like, well, really, she's blowing that out of proportion, which would not have been helpful for me. If you would have counseled me and said at that Mm -hmm. moment, that's silly, get over it, I wasn't being rude to you or whatever. Yeah. But there were actually all these other things for months that had been building up that I needed to explain to you Mm -hmm. in order for you to be like, okay, let's talk about those things then so that those thoughts and those patterns of thinking were really truly put to rest does yeah. that make sense and so i remember this now and so i could say oh, i could say to some of them yes those are legitimate yeah like those are actually those suck i'm sorry that that's happening and let me do what i can some yeah. of it's out of both of our control yeah because you have all sorts of other people in your life and different layers of relationship that's normal that's good it's a, it's a design feature but what it means is that you know, when, when there's tension or conflict in a home, it's not always like the husband did something to the wife or the wife did something to the husband. Yeah. Sometimes it's like, I'm frustrated about three friendships, one church problem, an extended family issue, and then you did something small. And so now I, it seems like I'm way more upset than I should be. Yeah. And it's because you're not just upset at the little thing. Yeah. And what needs to happen is that she needs to be clear, he needs to be clear. Yeah talk to the other person and uh, get it out there. So what I was saying about men, what men can tend to do, a direction that this can happen for men, is like 
both people are assuming that the other person can read their mind. And so a man might get home from a hard day or for a week if he's tired or something or, and not be that talkative. And she can start to think, is he mad at me? Like, what's going on? He doesn't want to talk to me. Does he not love me? I just, is this, oh no. Like, and then she's mad. And then he's like, why is she mad? And then he's like, <laughs> wants to be further away. He can do this with uh, sexual intimacy too, where a husband can be like, man, I've like given her the eyes of love six times this week. And she doesn't, <laughs> it seems like she's ignoring me or she's rebuffing me. She doesn't even want, she doesn't even desire me anymore. Man, like what's. Are you saying the flip side? The opposite is, oh, thing. okay. But in a male, this is a very common like male and I remember another pastor that I know was talking about how counseling fam- husbands and wives through things like this. And he just said, a lot of the time, a husband just needs to tell us, like, let's see that he he's not satisfied in the sexual relationship. Lead. He needs to go and say, just listen, say it. the frequency of our sexual intimacy is not, I think it should be greater. And it would it would serve me. And can we can we work on that? And just being clear, because you have to, men have to remember that she's not thinking the way you are thinking. Nor but are she you can thinking. start thinking that way at nine o'clock in the morning. Yes, lead up to nine p.m. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you have to be clear about it. Yeah, yeah, that does. Yeah, help. she can get there, but he needs to be more like sometimes more direct and not get passive aggressive and be like pouting because she's not you know like the door doesn't close after the kids are in bed and she's not all of a sudden like you know flipping her hair around or something and looking. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be kid friendly here. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> And in, instead, instead of just being frustrated and surly and being like, well, I guess she, she doesn't even love me. That's the male equivalent sometimes of like the cold shoulder poutiness. And a lot of it comes back to assuming the motives of your spouse in the least charitable light. And that instead of saying, she's probably really tired right now. And I know that she's not a man. So she's not thinking exactly the same way I am. I should probably be clearer and help her get, <laughs> get there. Not not so that it's like a pity thing, but so that it's genuine. But she might need more help in certain seasons for it to be genuine. So basically, this one is like, ladies, are you slandering your husband in your head? Yeah, yes, yes. Men, are you slandering your wife in your head? Yes, that is a huge, huge thing. I don't know why we only put slander in the realm of friendship. But this yeah. is something that I will, I honestly, not a lot anymore, but it, it is a common thing for wives where yeah. I'll say, stop. Did that, did he actually say that? Or yeah. did he actually do that? Yeah. <laughs> and there have been times where I've said, if he actually did that, I'm hanging up the phone right now and calling the cops and the elders. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, well, he didn't actually do <laughs> Which that. Which I get it. I do understand like an emotional moment and exaggeration, but it it really is important in in really high emotion situations to not exaggerate. I think that would be yeah. a good thing for all of us ladies to focus on is don't exaggerate yep. the details. Don't exaggerate the details. Because the person, because this is what happens in a counseling situation, mm-hmm. those details really matter at how the person is going to react yep. in counseling you. Mm-hmm. So in your mind, you might just be thinking, no, this is just an emotional way to express it. And they're thinking, holy crap, that changes everything. Yeah, And then he yelled at me and he said, and what he really did was he just said something kind of a little more firmly than usual, but you're re-describing it as he yelled at me. Um, even just uh, uh, thinking about slandering your you, you've sp- you've helped you have really helped me with this in being charitable in the way you describe another yeah. person. Just being overly charitable to en- to even people who are like quote unquote enemies, people who are at odds with you. It's important that we interrogate ourselves and say, yeah. okay, in my retelling of the events that I'm frustrated about. How many of the things that I just said are stone cold facts and how many of them are my interpretations, my assumptions, my emotional response or exaggerations? Because a lot of the time, if you get down to the cold, hard bedrock fact, we're reading between the lines, we are intuiting, we're assuming things, we're assuming motives, Mm -hmm. we're kind of implying motives, sometimes from good evidence, but we have to remember that charity, Christian charity, which we definitely owe to our spouse and our kids and our family, our church friends, mm-hmm. we definitely owe this to others, is assuming the best of them yeah. until proven otherwise. Correct. And in act, and, and this is so important, not just assuming it, but acting in light of Yeah. <laughs> not getting mad. Do you desire to be financially shrewd for the sake of your family and future generations? We know that a robust society depends on getting this right success in building and passing on personal wealth 
Let's be mature, responsible leaders with the resources God expects us to turn a profit on, to love our children and children's children well. Joe Garrisey with Backwards Planning Financial integrates investments, debt, insurance, tax strategies, and legacy planning in a holistic approach, coaching his clients to act wisely. You can do better than you received. You can affect your family's trajectory and maximize your efforts to set up long-term fruitfulness. Joe starts with your values and goals, then provides impactful counsel to help you form and implement your plan. Visit him online at backwardsplanningfinancial.com or just tap on his website link in the description and reach out to Joe to get started today. Number three, this is the uh, the satanic inversion of James 1, 19 and 20. But so many small fights about stupid things come from being quick to speak, slow to listen, and quick to anger. Man, I've learned this the hard way with the kids, like where I'm just trying to parent too quickly through a situation yeah. and I'm like, no, no, just be quiet. I get it. I get it. Just be quiet. Be quiet. <laughs> yeah. I've done that too. <laughs> and they're like, no, 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 no. Listen, listen, no, 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 listen, listen. And you're like, no, you just want to talk back. And they're like, no, no, I really have some pertinent information. <laughs> also, we do call this a wise appeal though. Actually, yes, make we, a wise we do appeal. try to teach them to make a wise appeal, but there have been so many times that, especially when kids are just learning how to communicate well, mm-hmm. like between like five to seven age yeah. range where you just smother them to move on to the next thing quickly. And really you have the whole situation discombobulated or like you don't even understand what they're working through in their heart yeah. that led them to that. That is the deeper issue you should be parenting instead yep. of the actual behavior that's coming out. So this has been so important in parenting for me. Yes, it is. This is just so key. Being slow to speak, quick to listen, slow to anger. Yeah. So think about how many small, stupid arguments that you've had in your in your life where it was literally just that you fired up really quickly that you took something someone said in the worst possible light, like we just said, maybe, and then you immediately decided that you were going to be angry about it. And you, were there, you weren't going to stop and assess whether this was the type of offense you could overlook. You weren't going to stop and assess whether they even meant the thing you're saying. And instead, you were just like, I'm going to be quick to speak, slow to... This is the satanic inversion of the fruits of the Spirit operating within the Christian life. I just think it's almost just self-explanatory. It's literally like where words are many, <laughs> Sin abounds. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes it's just simply making sure if, if there's a, if there's the, you're not feeling, maybe you're feeling out of sync with a church friend. We've been talking a lot about marriage, but this is so true of like friend relationships in church where a lot of church splits or divisions within a church, they start with small little relational conflicts. And then people start to think the worst of the other person. Yeah. And they start categorizing them as an enemy and building a case against them in their head. And then just being quick to speak, slow to listen, quick to anger towards them no matter what they say. And pretty soon you're just not for them anymore. And the result is like church division, people leaving churches. You know, this this just happens all the time. And instead of that, what the Lord would call us to is to... Early in that process, disrupt the the bitterness from growing by being quick, quick to listen, even meaning, okay, I'm going to go and be be clear about maybe an issue I have or some, some misunderstanding, or I'm going to assume the best. I'm going to go ask for clarification. I'm going to maybe sit down, have a conversation, and be like, you know what? It seems like we've been at odds with each other a little bit recently. And, and I don't remember when it started or if there was some specific thing, but is there anything that that I've done to offend you or that needs to be cleared up? Is there any sin or offense? Um, Or if you have a specific offense or sin, like, hey, it seemed like you did or you said this or you meant that this and that, you know, I think that I've been, I've been stewing on that. And I just need to ask in my misunderstanding, is there, maybe there's a sincere disagreement that we can still be friends across. And, but so often what we do is we just immediately go, they're an enemy. That's it. You can do this with spouse, kids. Yeah, because we don't want to go through the hard part of like that. Yep. Clarification and asking and yeah. Next week, we're going to, next episode of Bright Hearth, we're going to be talking about the flip side of this, which is like, I jokingly call it how to pick a fight. This one's like how not to fight about stupid things, how to pick a fight. But I, and I don't really mean pick a fight, but I mean like evaluating when you do need to talk to somebody and not cover the offense. 
because that's a genuine category that happens a lot of the time. So we're going to talk about that next time. But one of the keys to, to doing that well is getting this right, is being quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, just generally being a hard person to offend. I mean, if, if you work as hard as you can on being the person who is hard to be not at peace with, it will serve you. What does it mean if you're the sort of person that isn't necessarily angry because like you are angry, but because you, I'm trying to think of what it, what the sin is. I am quick to speak more so because I'm impatient, Mm. which it's still related to anger, but it's less of like, I want to prove I'm right. So I'm going to be quick to speak. It's more of like, Mm. I'm frustrated at this imposition. Does that make sense? So I guess it's still pride. Yeah, it's I, I think so pride with not wanting to be interrupted with this yeah. problem to solve. Impatience is definitely related to pride. In, I mean, and I mean that in my own heart when I'm like, oh, yeah, this interruption. Yeah, a lot of the times it's like, oh, I'm so important. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what it is. Don't the kids understand? Or like, doesn't this person get it? You're like, well, what if they don't get it? Are you a big deal? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> the, exactly. Does the Lord listen to you? You know, like he is, he is a big deal and he, and he, he listens to you. This is just James, <laughs> James point. four. This is Proverbs three thirty four and James four, six this is a good bridge into our last category here and it's related. So I'm just going to say it and then we can, we can discuss the last big reason in today's episode for why we fight over stupid things and uh, how to avoid it is just seasoning your speech with what, what, what I'll call the three S's of sarcasm, scoffing and scorning. Seasoning your speech. So Paul says... Wait, don't do this, right? Don't do this. Oh, okay. I'm saying this is what causes... I said that poorly. In in Colossians, Paul says, let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, that you may know how to answer each one. This is like the inversion of that again, where instead of your, your speech being seasoned with salt, with grace, with the word of God, with patience, all those things, the fruit of the spirit, instead our, our speech can become seasoned with meaning every word or sentence or paragraph that comes out of our mouth is often carries the flavor of sarcasm, mm. scoffing, and scorning. Yeah. And, and, and I'm thinking specifically of like Proverbs 3.34. Towards the scorners, he, that is God, is scornful, but to the humble he gives favor. James 4.6 quotes from the Greek translation of that passage, and he says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And, and I've just seen again... This is a temptation in my own heart that I that I know comes up. It's a very common way of having of living with a low grade kind of sinful pattern of speech mm-hmm. that makes it really easy to get into fights all the time. There is that proverb about the friend who's shoots arrows essentially and then kind of says, Oh, that shouldn't hurt. James. <laughs> that, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's not James, isn't it? It's, Proverbs? No, you're right. It's Proverbs. Like a madman who throws firebrands, arrows, oh, yeah. and death is the man who deceives his neighbor and says, I'm only joking. Yeah, there you go. There you I, go. And it's funny you say that. That is literally the verse that I wrote down because oh. so many times that's what this kind of person does. And it's it's easy. It doesn't take much intelligence. And it's thoughtless in the sense that like you lack, I do feel like you lack understanding sometimes even when you're being sarcastic. Yep. Because think about it. A one-year-old can mimic sarcasm, but they yeah. don't. Un- they have no clue what they're doing, yep. though. Yep. So it doesn't take much intelligence. No. Insult yourself in yeah. order to stop doing it. <laughs> it's Proverbs twenty-six, eighteen, and nineteen. By the way, sorry, I, I wrote down the wrong reference. But so what? What we're talking about here is if you have a, an attitude of scornful to scorn something is it treated as if it's worthless or contemptible or beneath you. And a lot of the time, this shows up in scoffing talk, which is to contemptuously ridicule people. And a lot of the time, these two things are twins that are masked by sarcasm. Mm-hmm. So somebody is, think about the, the, the flow chart here of the sin. There's pride. And so they begin to think that everybody is beneath them and contemptible. This kid is so stupid. My husband is such an idiot. He's such a bumbler. My, my, all these people at church, they're just so dumb. I am, you start, you think of yourself very highly. And so you start to think everybody else is contemptible beneath you. And so you scoff when they talk. You're like, Ugh. this is the eye roll when your husband talks or when your wife talks. Or, this is a good example of how all of our conversation is an overflow of the heart. Then. Yes. So there's that scoffing. And a lot of the time where this is masked is with that sarcastic speech. It's like, I was just joking. 
continual sarcasm, I think is one of the one of the most commonly accepts acceptable sins in a lot of Christian homes and relationships is just continual sarcastic, caustic, sort of cutting down of the other person all the time, joking at their expense, denigrating them. Agreed. Can you think of any examples of how this might look in a normal kind of church, marriage, parenting? I think about our kids. That is one of our rules in talking to the kids. No sarcasm. You're talking about between the two of us. Well, and for the kids too. Yeah, like us to the kids. We try to not talk sarcastically to them. Like an example would be like if uh, if one of the kids does something that has just made your life extremely difficult, you're, mm-hmm. you, you will not say, great job, that was really helpful. <laughs> yeah, on the ideal day, I would say that. You're right, right? <laughs> no, this is like... <laughs> This this is an area that is very hard for me genuinely because I come from a very sarcastic family. Uh huh. And this is, can be a family culture. That yeah. Sets oh, in. totally. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. In a workplace yeah. culture, a church culture, a friendship yeah. culture, because there's a fine line I th- between. I think you're right that it is one of the most accepted. Yeah. Things. I think you're right there. There's a fine so line. So it can be. It feels weird to try and break that because yeah, like you're about mm-hmm. to say. Sorry to interrupt. You're, you're good. There is a fine line where it is accepted, and uh-huh. so it needs to be very cut and clear. And the problem with parenting is that even though the parents often sit with it too, they can understand. I like Luke Jankovic's mm-hmm. analogy of like using certain words as tools. Yeah, they're too sharp for little kids. Yeah, like a knife is too sharp for a little kid, but yeah. an adult can use that. But what happens is. The adult might be using it, but then the child is mimicking it in a situation yep. that's inappropriate in. They're going and picking up the AR-15 that you are using to shoot targets or hunt or defend your home lawfully, and they're pointing it at everybody. Yeah. You you have to recognize that sarcasm is extremely tempting to, to little people because it seems <laughs> like an easy way to be funny, and kids don't know how to be funny. Yeah, they wanna. exactly. So there's a fine line in relationships, it's particularly male relationships between like, friendly ribbing where you're like, Oh, you're, you know, I have, you know, bro, am I fat? It's like, bro, I have five fat friends. And it's you're actually, four of them. it has been very interesting with the kids being in school to see like they've had to learn and they've done a good job of this. Yeah. I think like, okay, it's okay to talk that way with your friends, but we don't bring that home. That's right. Or you don't talk to an adult that way. And, yeah. and they're like, Oh, and you'll see, they'll be like, Oh, I can't. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of the time, I think what happens is, if you have a caustic, particularly family culture that's caustic, sarcastic, where sarcasm is used as a passive aggressive means of dealing with problems instead of dealing with them head on. Mm-hmm. So there's like low grade, low intensity warfare happening all the time. That's not a pleasant environment. Like yeah. w- what happens is nobody's genuine. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, I mean, man, it is like, it's hard to describe the effect on a culture when sarcasm and scoffing sets in. It's you know what it reminds me of. It's like the too cool for school thing. Yeah, you know, yeah, like that's that. True. That's. I'm yeah. just. Ugh, I'm so cool. I'm just like kind of. I'm kind of a rebel. <laughs> yeah, I'm a scoffer. <laughs> well, blessed is you does not sit in the way of. <laughs> you know, this was scoffer, this has been so helpful. Scoffer. I feel like in helping me curb some of this the last couple. I don't know month weeks. I don't know. Was when Pastor Toby simply said. The worst question you can ask a child is, why did you do that? I know, I do. And then he said, because they literally just got to earth. Yeah, they just got here. I've I've thought it. there's been so many times when I have been tempted to say something sarcastic that I'm like, it's because they're literally using their fingers for the first time that they spilled the milk. Or they're literally learning that skill for the first time that they made a mess like that. Like answering that question in your head Uh instead of reacting verbally. Yeah verbal vomit on your two-year-old yeah. is not helpful. <laughs> and, and to your spouse, if you think about it, you have like, let's say you have a problem. You're annoyed. You have a couple options in front of you. Cover the offense. We're going to talk next week about when you to know it's the time to actually say something and how to do that. And, and your third one is like, you know what I'll do instead of doing either of those is I'll just make a sarcastic cutting remark. Yeah. You did not just, you actually just tried to put the fire out with gasoline. You're just making it worse. Because now nobody is de- dealing with anything directly, but they're all mad at each other. 
We lose way too many of our Saturdays, again, to foolish, stupid fighting. Again, like, remember, there was almost a shooting war started between two countries in Europe because of a stray dog, right? You can literally end up divorced and ruin your house because you, in pride and obstinance and being quick to speak and slow to listen and quick to anger and being sarcastic and cutting and a scoffer and, you know, thinking the worst of everybody around you, you can get into this this bitter spirit where you will actually tear your house down around you. And instead, we're Christians to put on beloved as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, meekness, kindness, humility, to love one another, pray for the fruits of the Spirit, to bless those who curse us, to do the opposite of all of that. So in next week's episode, this, this was about how not to fight, when not to fight, how not to fight about stupid things. Next week, we're going to talk about how to evaluate an issue soberly and how to assess when you maybe do need to quote unquote fight about something, when you need to bring something up and, and uh, it, with the aim of peace and to glorify God, you might have to engage in some level of conflict to resolve it. And so we're going to talk about how to assess that, how to think through that process of bringing a concern, entering a potential conflict in a way that glorifies God and loves your neighbor and steers your life and their life towards the peace of the lived out gospel. So so tune in next week. Make sure that uh, you are sending in your questions for next season with the link in the description, guys. We really appreciate that. And uh, we appreciate everybody who supports the show at patreon.com. We've got a link in the description there um, where you can sign up for, you know, as little as like a cup of coffee a month, basically, to help continue to make the show possible. And uh, we really appreciate everyone there. And we put out a weekly little short mini episode called In the Kitchen on all sorts of practical and granular looks at different issues in the productive household. I realized I could send you my lengthy meal list that I've been working from. Yeah. I told our patrons, I think somewhere, I said I was going to post that when it was yes. done. So we didn't record an episode this week that we'll it doesn't matter. Because of 4th of July. Yeah, yeah you should um, you should use that though. And I'll send yeah, you we'll, that PDF. We'll get that posted. So there's resources like that. We have a back catalog at this point of dozens of those episodes, yeah. as well as other resources. It's where we publish a lot of our direct stuff that doesn't get published anywhere else and where we answer questions most directly. We we can devote more time to that focused. These are people who are in, they're helping out with the show and we, we'd we love to give time in, in that situation to help answer questions and all that sort of thing. So, you know, make sure you check that out, guys. If you haven't already, listen to my new single, A Mighty Host, and uh, it, it was trending on Instagram. Really? The audio, just today, as we record oh, this, July, whatever it is. I can't even remember. How do you Sixth? know that? Because it told me. It tells you. Yeah. Oh, so it's I looked not like at the a trending on. Yeah, you can go on Instagram. Like you, Twitter does. It's not like that. Trending. It, right. Yeah, okay. It's not like that. You can put. You can make a reel with a video. Like I told people, hey, put up a video with your family or your kids, oh, and yeah. use this song because it's about like the glory of the Christian family, and show that kids are better than vacations. And it I made saw a trend, someone so. with a baby who had really cute hair. Uh huh. And I messaged her and said, your baby has really cute hair. I appreciate yes. some cute hair on a baby. Do we love some good old cute baby hair? <laughs> it sounded really weird. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Go leave us a five-star review if you haven't wherever you listen, and we'll catch you next time on Bright Hearth. <laughs>